everyone. I'm Kenzie Bach. I'm the City Council Chair um, of the Committee on City Services and Innovation Technology and also the District 8 City Councilor. Um, it's Wednesday, April 19th, 2023, and we're here today for a virtual hearing on docket 0259. Order for a hearing to discuss renaming the Roxbury branch of the Boston Public Library to the Nubian Library. This matter was sponsored by Councillor Tanya Fernandez Anderson and was referred to the committee on January 25th, 2023. In accordance with Chapter 107 of the Acts of 2022, modifying certain requirements of the open meeting law and relieving public bodies of certain requirements, including the requirement that public bodies conduct, its me conduct their meetings in a public place that is open and physically accessible to the public. Um, staff, can we just mute everyone who's not me right now? Um, the City Council will be conducting this working session remotely. This enables the City Council to carry out its responsibilities while ensuring public access to its deliberations through adequate alternative means. Written comments may be sent to the committee email at ccc.csit at boston.gov, and those will be made part of the record and available to all councillors. Um, this hearing is also being recording, recorded and live streamed at boston.gov slash city-council-tv. It will be rebroadcast on Xfinity Channel 8, RCN Channel 82, and Verizon Fios Channel 964. Um, I will be taking public testimony at the end of this hearing, so if you are watching and you want to testify and you're not already signed up, please email cora.montrond at boston.gov to sign up. So that's C-O-R-A dot M-O-N-T-R-O-N-D at boston.gov um, and Cora will get you the link. Um, and then we just ask in public testimony that you state your name and affiliation or your residence um, and limit your comments to a couple of minutes just so that we can make sure everybody gets in. Um, and then again, just one more time, if you wanna send written testimony, if you're watching this after the fact and you wanna weigh in, you can send that to ccc.csit at boston.gov. That's our committee email. Um, and we're joined here today um, by the sponsor, um, Councilor Anderson, uh, our, our city councilor at large, Julia Mejia, and our council president, Ed Flynn of District 2. So thank you to all my colleagues for being here. Um, I will go to colleagues just for a brief opening statements, starting with the sponsor. Um, and then uh, I will be going over to uh, President David Leonard from the Boston Public Library. Um, and again, uh, Vice Chair of the Trustees of the Boston Public Library, Evelyn Arana Ortiz um, first. And then as mentioned before, as, uh, and then we'll have after we hear from them and do question, counselor questions to them, we'll hear from an advocates panel um, and I'll, I'll read out all the names on that when we get there. Um, so without further ado, I'll pass it over to the lead sponsor, Councilor Anderson. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, good morning, everyone. So happy to be here uh, to convene over, over this conversation. Um, I've heard from uh, community advocates, those on the panel as well in the community, um, as well as constituents that uh, this, been, this has been an effort uh, and you will hear more from the panel about exactly what uh, steps uh, were taken in terms of um, uh, the community engagement process to renaming the Roxbury Library to Nubian Square Library. And um, from what I've heard, there's been um, a consensus from the community that they, the overwhelming consensus or agreement to rename uh, the library to Nubian Square. Uh, so I um, am happy to be here. Thank you, Madam Chair, for creating the space, uh, the platform for us to have this discussion. I will keep it brief because I know that um, the panelists uh, will have more, much more information to enlighten us on this topic. Thank you. Great. Thank you so much, Councillor Anderson. Councillor Mejia. Sorry, I was on mute. Good morning, everyone. Happy to be here with you. And Councillor Bach, Chair Bach, is this your final hearing um, that you are chairing in your tender with us? I just wanted to, is it? So actually, I'm chairing two today. So this is my okay. final virtual chair, and then I have a final in-person chair in the afternoon. So, okay. uh, so we yeah, wanna... my last day. So we want to uplift that. So um, your final virtual. Um, so 
happy that it's something that is being community led and it has something to do with some sort of history because libraries have lots of history. So it has some sense of a relevance to you and the things that you deeply care about. So I'm happy that um, the, uh, the audience has um, stepped up to the plate to make sure your final virtual um, hearing is, is something that will be memorable. Um, I am counsel at large, Julia Mejia. Sorry, I can't be on camera. I am going to be transitioning um, in and out, as I mentioned earlier, but wanted to just um, show my support um, for the renaming of the library. Um, I know that the community worked really hard at renaming uh, the uh, square to Nubian, and I just think this is the continuation of really centering the voices of the people and creating space for um, us to hear. And so just wanted to go on the record in my support and look forward to listening in and figuring out how I can um, support my colleague, Councillor Anderson, as she continues to shepherd this along. Thank you all. Thank you, Councillor Mejia. Um, President Flynn. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, glad to be here with my colleagues and came here to support um, Councillor Tanya Fernandez Anderson and what she wants to do. And I know what she is doing is bringing the community together. And I came here to show my support and respect to Council Fernandez Anderson in the process. Also want to acknowledge the um, important work of uh, Boston Public Libraries and David Leonard as well, but also the Roxbury community that's also here. I, I see a, a friend that I, I haven't seen in a long time, Siddiqui Cambone. So, Want to want to say hello to him as well, and uh, glad to be here. I'm I'm here to listen, but uh, but at the end of the day, I support my council colleague, um, Council for Name Ms. Anderson. Thank you. Great, thank you so much, President Flynn. Um, yeah, and I'll say for my part, you know, I um, wanted to make sure that we had a chance to have this hearing um, before I have to give up this chair. Um, I think that uh, our libraries are really very beloved um, in all of our communities, and I know that's true in Roxbury as well. And, and you know, and I think that that passion about what to name our libraries is just, uh, it's another sign of how much um, they matter to people. So, uh, you know, I think what, I think today our discussion, I imagine, is going to focus on sort of two areas. So one is sort of the procedural question of, of naming of libraries and how that works. Um, and I know there's some differences of opinion on that front. Um, and then also, you know, I think it's a great opportunity for us to hear substantively from the public um, about uh, what you want the library named and why. So trying, you know, mainly in my role as chair here today to just create this space um, to hear from uh, to hear from all of the advocates in the library and counselors um, and looking forward to that. Before I go to the BPL for opening comments, I'm gonna um, recognize Councillor Aaron Murphy at large, who's also just joined us. Councillor Murphy, if you wanna make a brief opening statement. Um, I'll let us go right to um, other people on, but just happy to be on and listen to this conversation. Um, so I'll speak more when it's time for comments. Thank you. Great. Thank you, Councilor Murphy. Um, all right. Uh, President David Leonard, you have the floor. Um, thank you, uh, Council Chairperson Bach. Uh, good morning, Councillors and friends. Uh, thank you for the opportunity to testify today regarding the history and the naming process for the Roxbury branch of the Boston Public Library at Nubian Square, uh, formerly the Dudley branch. We continue to appreciate the Council's interest and concern for the entire Boston Public Library system, uh, but especially its branches. Uh, my testimony today will be followed by that of our Vice Chair of the Board of Trustees, Evelyn Arana Ortiz, and some of the facts we will present may be repeated in both testimonies. Carved over the entrance to the central library and integrated into the redesign of all of our new and recently renovated branches is the phrase free to all. What this means to our everyday operations is that we do everything in our power to ensure that all means all. All our spaces must be places of welcome, where every resident we serve can see themselves reflected in the identities of our spaces, our collections, and our programs. To give this committee context for this discussion, I would like to briefly outline the history of this branch and its names. The Roxbury branch of the Boston Public Library in Nubian Square, formerly known as the Dudley branch, opened in its current location in April of 1978. 
That building replaced both the Mount Pleasant branch and the privately endowed Fellows Athenaeum, known commonly then as the Roxbury branch. That entity still sponsors programs today at today's Roxbury branch. It is also worth noting that the Roxbury branch is the largest branch in the system with approximately 27,000 square feet, a signal of needing to serve the entirety of the neighborhood. In fiscal 2012, the city of Boston first allocated funding for a programming study, new signage, and some minor improvements to the space itself. This was the beginning of a process that ultimately led to a redesign and the full renovation that we can enjoy today at the corner of Dudley and Warren Streets. There was a robust community process during both the programming study and design phases of these projects, which included no fewer than nine official community meetings at which the BPL welcomed community input on a wide range of issues related to the branch redesign. The complete reimagination of the interior spaces and facades of the building we see today was completed in 2020. And we remind us all that was the first year of the COVID pandemic. In May of 2020, as the renovations due to due close to completion, the Board of Trustees of the Boston Public Library took up the issue of the name of the branch in order to align with the community's desire to do away with the Dudley name and to ensure that signage could be in place by the time the branch opened. The topic of the name of the branch was appropriately listed on the agenda published prior to the board's meeting on May 26th of 2020. At that meeting, two primary proposals were presented and public testimony from advocates of both the Nubian Square name and the Roxbury name were heard prior to the board's final discussion and vote. I would like to especially note the testimony in favor of the Roxbury name from several significant community voices, including the Roxbury Historical Society, along with the friends of the then Dudley branch, Fellows Trust program staff, local library staff members, frequent users of the branch, and program partners. The name Roxbury itself has rich resonance with the neighborhood's local black history and black community. Following public testimony on both names and robust discussion by the trustees, the chair, Bob Gallery, noted that there was clear consensus that the name should be changed from Dudley. As is the chair's prerogative, Mr. Gallery called for a vote on the name choice. With no trustees objecting to the vote being called, the board voted to change the name to the Roxbury branch of the Boston Public Library. At several subsequent meetings, under first the tenure of then chair Bob Gallery, and indeed current chair Priscilla Douglas, public comment has been brought forward by members of the Nubian Square Coalition, requesting that the matter be reopened. Those requests were heard thoroughly and on more than one occasion, but has been reiterated on the record that the trustees consider the question of the name to be a closed matter currently. We would direct you to the minutes of the board meeting in question, as well as to the subsequent editorial by the Bay State Banner's uh, local historian and journalist, Mel Miller, in support of this decision for more information including prior statements by community members that were given in testimony at the time. Mel Miller's editorial states, Roxbury is a historically significant name that has meaning for those who have called Roxbury home for several generations. I continue uh, to quote, when the United States of America was created, the first church in Elliott Square was already established in 1632. In 1783, Massachusetts became the first state to outlaw slavery. A son of Roxbury, Moorfield Story, a Harvard lawyer and descendant of early British settlers, became the first president of the NAACP, a post he maintained until his death. While William Lloyd Garrison was originally from Newburyport, he lived in Roxbury when he established the Liberator newspaper in 1831. That was the voice of the national anti-slavery movement in the US. 
the book Boston's Banner Years, 1965 to 2015, a saga of black success, lists many black achievers identified with Roxbury. Every Bostonian aware of our history should support this decision. Uh, closing the quotes from Mel Miller's editorial. Roxbury today is among the city's most diverse neighborhoods. According to the 2020 census, the population of the neighborhood includes 41% of residents who identified as black, while 30%, almost a third of Roxbury's residents, identify as Hispanic or Latino, categories from the census, 6% as Asian American Pacific Islander, and 7% identify as biracial. We continue to believe that the name Roxbury allows the branch, again, the largest in the system, to be reflective of the entire population of the neighborhood that it serves, while still celebrating its significance to the black community. I would draw your attention on this point further to written testimony of former trustee Zamawa Arenas, herself a Roxbury resident, who has submitted um, written testimony today. Indeed, the Roxbury name itself is embedded in the design of the branch, which showcases several public art projects sourced from the local community. One of these pieces, titled Roxbury, includes poetry from young artists across the Roxbury neighborhood, celebrating the Roxbury name. I would now like to turn to the procedural issues raised in the hearing order as filed, uh, which Councillor Bach alluded to in her opening statements. The authority of the Board of Trustees of the Library stems from the Massachusetts State Statute, including the BPL's enabling legislation of 1848 and Acts of Incorporation of 1878, which read in part, quote, said corporation shall have the authority to take and hold real and personal estate, which may be given, granted, bequeathed, or devised to it and accepted by the trustees for the benefit of the public library of the city of Boston or any branch library or any purpose connected therewith. The legislation continues, said trustees shall have the general care and control of the central public library in said city and of all branches thereof, which have been or which may hereafter be established together with the buildings and rooms containing the same and the fixtures and furniture connected therewith." End of quote. By state statute and 175 years of practice, the naming of buildings and spaces within BPL buildings has always been within the purview of the trustees of the library. This has been illustrated in several instances, most significantly in the naming of the Honan Alston branch, a name voted on and approved by the trustees of the library only upon the request in writing of then Mayor Thomas M. Menino. While the council's current order, as written, proposes a different course of action, and while we believe there is no action for the council to take beyond today's hearing, should the council desire to revisit this issue, practice would dictate that the appropriate course of action would be for the council to convey its desires in writing to the trustees of the Boston Public Library regarding any such request. I would like to close with one thought. While the Roxbury branch does serve the entire Roxbury community, we also do recognize, of course, that it anchors the physical geography now known as Nubian Square. We have proposed that the BPL refer to this branch going forward in its everyday correspondence and literature as the Roxbury branch at Nubian Square in our best efforts to satisfy both constituencies. I thank you for your time and attention to this matter, and I will now turn to our Vice Chair of the Board of Trustees, Evelyn Arana Ortiz, after which we'll be happy to take questions uh, initially from councillors. All right. Thank you, David. Um, good morning, Madam Chair and esteemed members of the committee. Um, I would like to express my greatest gratitude for the opportunity to provide my testimony on behalf of the Boston Public Library trustees. And as David noted, um, we serve as a corporation with general management and control of all property 
affairs and funds of the corporation. It has been my privilege to serve on the board for the, 14, you know, for the past 14 years, during which time I have held various roles, including vice chair, chair of both the finance and audit committee and the fellows Athenaeum committee. Let me allow, you know, allow me to provide you some historical context on the fellows Athenaeum, um, which was established in 1852 after the passing of Caleb Fellows, a successful seaman who on bequeath, um, as, you know, he bequeath a substantial portion of his wealth to construct a library in Roxbury that held over 5,000 books. The library was built in memory of his mother and his happiest years of life in, you know, while living in Roxbury. In 1974, the assets of the Fellows Athenaeums were transferred to the Boston Public Library, Roxbury branch, and through the Fellows Athenaeum Committee, the Board of Trustees works in partnership with the Friends of Roxbury Branch to select and fund top quality instructional programming at the Roxbury Branch. Through my years of service, I have had the pleasure of working closely with the Friends and witnessing their unwavering dedication to support the vibrancy of the Roxbury community, their commitment to ensuring that residents have access to first-rate programming, at the Roxbury branch has been nothing sort of remarkable. And year after year, we have delivered programs for all age groups and with various interests, such as the very popular Saturday piano lessons for children, jazz concerts, play readings, the most recent and very popular Corey Sealing Clinics, genealogy, cell phone for seniors, healthy cooking for families and seniors, and many more. During the annual, I'm just gonna recap, you know, our annual trustee meeting, which David did. Um, you know, it took place on May 26 of 2020, the year of COVID. Um, we reviewed capital projects, which included the status of the Roxbury branch, which had been closed for a couple of years due to renovations and it was due to reopen in the fall and naming considerations was proposed to the community. Prior to the meeting, the trustees received letters from two organizations advocating for different names for the branch. The Nubian Square Coalition proposed the name of Nubian Square Branch, while the Friends of the Roxbury Branch suggested the name Roxbury Branch. After thorough discussion, the trustees decided to invite public comment to hear from the community. The feedback from the community was valuable and the key stakeholders from, you know, that participated such as employees, members of the Nubian Square Coalition, friends of the library, uh, you know, Roxbury Branch, Roxbury Crossing Historical Trust, Roxbury Historical Society and lifelong residents of the neighborhood expressing their opinions. The overall perspective was that the community supported the renaming of the square to Nubian Square, but preferred the showcase, showcasing Roxbury's rich history by naming the library Roxbury Branch. Based on the feedback received, the trustees had a, held the vote and the motion to rename the Dudley Branch Library to Roxbury Branch Library was approved with a vote of seven to four. Shortly after, shortly thereafter, Melvin Miller, founder and owner of the Bay State Banner wrote the editorial that David so graciously read. Speaking from my personal experience, I am a proud Puerto Rican who has lived in the city for over 30 years and a frequent patron of many businesses in Nubian Square. As part of my research of renaming the library, I spoke with both patrons and business owners in the area. The feedback that I received was unanimous. They expressed concerns that naming the library after a particular ethnic group would alienate other members of the community and that library should be welcome to all. As such, there was a consensus that the library should be renamed in a way that reflects the diverse history and culture of the Roxbury community, while also maintaining an inclusive and welcoming environment to all. In closing, the Boston Public Library bylaws gives the trustees the power 
you know, to manage and control over all the library property affairs and funds. We believe that we have done the necessary due diligence in the renaming of the branch. Thank you for your time and consideration. Happy to answer any questions. Thank you so much, um, Vice Chair Anna and President Leonard. Um, I'll now go to counselors um, for questions in order of arrival. I'll save mine for the end. Um, and uh, yeah, and counselors again, I'll just, uh, just because we've got the advocate panel here, I will keep time. And so if you see me raise the gavel, let's just finish up. Um, so uh, we'll start with the sponsor, uh, Councilor Anderson. Madam, Chair, Madam, uh, Madam Councilor, you're muted. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. In the interest of time, I think um, I'll just make a statement. Um, what's concerning about some of the comments that I've heard thus far is that um, when you begin to make this narrative that if something is Afrocentric, if something becomes about the Black community, especially the African-American community, that it becomes exclusive What's offensive about that is that historically, the Black Americans and Black communities have been ostracized, oppressed, enslaved, genocide, and excluded, um, and always at the bottom of the totem pole, always last, always not prioritized. And yet, this community seems to be the very community that has made it possible for Latina women like yourself, African immigrant women like myself, to actually have opportunities in this country, in this state, in this city. The African American people, although severely mistreated, oppressed, and abused, have been very nurturing, open, inclusive, and always ready to nurture everybody's young. However, Still, the community, whenever it gets gentrified, we make excuses that the immigrant population needs to be included as though the African-American community has not included that community. That the community, the Black Americans should make way for everybody else, including processes in the city that includes underrepresented communities. For example, even when it's a diverse program or a diversity program to include more people, white women then be considered the underrepresented com community. So again, the African-American people will take the last seat. It is important, and I can give you all the research as you have your research, to completely, um, I wouldn't say dismiss, but it's important that we use research in terms of in order to atone for the harms that this city, that this country has done to the African-American people, that we create specifically intentional Afrocentric culture districts, Afrocentric um, identity, Afrocentric preserve Afrocentric history for identity's sake, for cultural sake. Whenever the African-American opens their mouth to speak or to represent themselves, or to be included, or to ask for a bit of crumbs in this city, the city responds with, that's inclusive, that's exclusive, that does not include others. I would say, how dare you? How dare you say that because now Roxbury is gentrified, that it now, if we take landmarks, if we take historic uh, 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 facilities or uh, not even historic, and we say, this bit right here, we need it to be to represent the Afrocentric culture. This right here needs, the name needs to represent what historically has been here, or at least that it needs to speak to the identity of the African boys and girls the African-American boys and girls, then it's called exclusive. I have, with all due respect, and um, David, uh, Mr. President, Evelyn, I thank you for being here. I thank you for your work. But I think that we need to have a very honest 
a very transparent conversation about what this means in this Black community. Gentrified or not, Rex, Roxbury is experiencing the fastest rate of gentrification to no fault of their own, because they are disenfranchised, because they are oppressed, because they are pushed back. Now people have to find a way to survive outside of Roxbury. And because now they're gentrified, now they can't even have a peace. It's not acceptable. And I understand your process and your reviews or a, a article from the banner does not speak for all. That is one person's opinion. And the fact that you have uh, heard overwhelmingly response from the community that they wanted to be named Nubian Library, but yet you felt that to preserve inclusiveness that you needed to name it Roxbury, it's not sufficient to make your argument. But I uh, yield my time now because I would love to hear from my colleagues. I would love to hear from the panelists to hear about their hard work and their research and why this is important. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Anderson. Um, Councillor Mejia? Councillor Mejia, you're muted. I am unmute. How dare you mute me now, I'm sorry. Um, so I, so I, I am, so first, let me just start off by thanking the administration for being here and, um, and for the record stating that I'm an Afro-Latina, which means I claim my black roots. And just like you, I also grew up here in the city of Boston. And David, I do appreciate you utilizing my hashtag all means all because all does mean all and all the truths and all the struggles and all the ways that um, the black community in Roxbury has uh, um, work to just get ahead. And I think for me, as a Latina, as a Black Latina, as an Afro-Latina, um, I think that it is not about my culture. I don't think a name will uh, make me feel like I am not represented in that community. I think it's really about how we uplift other communities that have come before us. And historically, Roxbury has always been associated with the Black community, despite who lives there or not, right? So it's really about censoring it in a historical perspective and uplifting um, that little circle, that little square, because right now it's getting smaller in terms of just the, uh, the way the situation is happening in terms of development, right? So I just think it's important for me to um, reaffirm my support as an Afro-Latina, recognizing that I see myself reflected in the community um, and that I, I think that this is really so much bigger than um, just the name. It really is about valuing the will of the residents of the, who live there now because there was a ballot um, that we voted on, or well, at least a, a sector of the city to change the name to Nubian Square, right? So that determined the will of the residents that, that live there. Um, and very similar to the people who are there now, um, this is the will of the residents that are there. So in the spirit of honoring the people, I just, I'm going to reaffirm my support um, in, in that way. So, um, por lo que están uh, oyendo y escuchando, yo como Afro-Latina, eh, aquí estoy para dejarles saber que yo apoyo eh, cambiando el nombre uh, to Nubian uh, Square, uh, Nubian Library, porque es bien importante apoyar a nuestros hermanos afroamericanos um, y dejándolos saber que nosotros no estamos aquí con ellos. So just in case you need a translator, I was just letting my Latino friends who are listening in know that I am in support of standing with my black brothers and sisters on this case. Thank you. Thank you so much, Councilor Mejia. Um, Council President Flynn. Thank you, Madam Chair, and um, thank you to David, David Lennon and, and the public library team that's present, and my colleagues as well. Evelyn, uh, thank you for your important work as well. Um, I said at the beginning um, that I support my district city councilor, um, and, I, and I think it's important for district co city councilors, in, in, in my opinion, 
to support each other on issues impacting um, what's happening in their particular district. I, so I, I support District Councilor Tanya Fernandez Anderson. I um, also want to say thank you to David Leonard. David Leonard in the, in the library team for the important work they do across the city. Libraries bring us together and they're a welcoming place. And, um, and I just want to thank, thank David for his leadership and, and Councilor Fernandez Anderson as well. And I think, I think this discussion, people might agree, people might disagree, but I think that, I think there's probably some common, common ground if, if we continue to talk and we continue to keep dialogue open and listen to each other, learn from each other and, and respect each other. I think, I think, I think that's the critical part of this conversation. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, President Flynn. Uh, Councilor Ryan. Hi, yeah, thank you. Um, and thank you to David and the library for speaking. Um, a, lo a lot of thoughts, um, you know, names matter. I remember, and I also agree that, you know, a process matters. The Richard J. Murphy School was named after my grandfather, but one of the, you know, wonderful things was that it was attached to a community center and that really mattered when they were talking in the community about what they wanted in that neighborhood. And during the Menino years, and it was after the fact that I realized they took a vote, which I didn't realize, and then all of a sudden the community center was no longer called the Murphy community center and just realizing that, you know, things, things happen, time moves on, but advocating for a name and following a process matters. So I just want to end by saying I support my district counselor and I appreciate, you know, you sticking up for your district. It reminds me of yesterday's hearing, Councilor Fernandez Anderson, where maybe we don't have the right to make a change, but you putting this out there and having your voice and letting neighborhood people speak up also is very important. So I do appreciate the process. So maybe we need to look at how do we change names and who does have that responsibility. So I don't want to start, you know, supporting changes one-offs. If it, if it is needed to make a system change of how names get put onto buildings across the city or under different you know, departments, then that's a conversation I'm here for, but I just wanted to say that you know, it, it's, a, it's a tough call, but I appreciate that we're here and I know that we'll be hearing from community members um, after, so I'm here to listen for that, so thank you. Thank you, Councilor Murphy. Um, uh, President Leonard, I was wondering, um, and this is sort of a question on behalf of the committee, like, um, so I, I appreciated uh, your testimony about sort of the library's process, and it would be great to get that in writing if we could, um, just for the record. Um, has, has the Public Facilities Commission or Corporation Council or sort of anybody from City of Boston proper side, like, issued any legal like comment or language or letter related to the sort of interaction of the trustees statute and um and the um, public facilities naming stuff on our end um i'm, I'm uh, happy to submit my, my testimony in, in writing and i just want to um recognize and give the utmost respect to the comments from all of the counselors who have spoken so far uh both about the library and also about where, uh, where we encounter issues of our racial history, which is very charged in the city of Boston. And so I, I wanna um, just appreciate centering some of this conversation in that work. Uh, we are, uh, we want, the library wants to be a, a champion of everybody's rights um, when it comes to these issues. And I think one point that may have gotten lost in, in some of my testimony was that as the trustees responded to the community um, feedback that we received during that May board meeting, it was from um, representatives across the neighborhood. And uh, I know there's a sense that there may be an overwhelming desire. I've heard that word used a couple of times. That was not what we heard at the time. Um, so 
Um, I just want to want to um, footnote footnote those comments, uh, Councillor Bach. Regarding the, the jurisdictional issue, uh, we have not gotten a uh, any specific um, determination, um, and so that would be a, a matter that we would have to resolve um, should. Uh, should this want to go forward in a way different than than what I had outlined, uh, I do know that there there is the you know precedence certainly matters, but precedence should not be the only thing to use when trying to decide what what to do, what is what is right. Thanks so much, David. Yeah, and and definitely we as the committee can seek you know further uh, clarity uh, on that end. So I'm going to put that on my list. Um, yeah, and I just want to um, I want to thank you uh, and Evelyn for being here and for your service and for you know I think it 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 is obviously the branch library in Nubian Square in Roxbury, but really I think the whole city is very proud of this branch library. I, I certainly feel it's I'm not lucky enough to have it in my district, um, but it's uh, it's really a wonderful building. And, and as I said at the start, I think that this conversation about um, the name just reflects how proud folks are of it and kind of that question of how to how to best refer to it. Um, but I, uh, I, rather than making more comments myself, I really want to get to our, sorry, that's um, someone else's timer. Um, so uh, I really want to get to our community advocates who've been waiting patiently here. So I am going to go to that panel next um, and then counselors can ask questions of the panel as well. So. Um, thank you so much to the library and uh, and yeah, if you can just submit that testimony, David, that would be fantastic. Um, and Evelyn, if you do have yours written as well, that would be great. Um, thank you. Uh, all right, so now I'm gonna, the next panel up is gonna be um, Mr. Siddiqui Kambon, who's the director of the Black Community Information Center and also the chair of the Nubian Square Coalition. Um, and then Ms. Jamada Smith, who's a member of the um, Black Community Information Center and Nubian Square Coalition. Uh, and Dr. Regin Reginald Jackson, also a member. Um, and uh, I'll go first to Mr. Kemble. You just have to unmute. One second, still muted. Siddiqui, are you able to unmute yourself or can someone unmute at the staff end? There we go. All right, we're all set? Yes, you're all set. You have the floor. Uh, I just want to say uh, good day to everybody and I appreciate this uh, opportunity. I consider it to be a, a historic moment. And let me just say uh, what I'm about to present here from a chrono chronological perspective in terms of the history uh, differs from what Mr. Leonard presented. Uh, let me just say very quickly in terms of the Black Community Information Center, we're an all volunteer organization. Uh, we, we were incorporated in uh, 1986, and we'd actually done some pro uh, work prior to that around issues of community security. Uh, we've been involved in uh, several uh, community projects. Uh, an example, and I won't go through all of them, just to give you an example, and let me just say that a lot of good people have worked with me through the years. Uh, when you talk about the, uh, the mall, the Mecca Mall in Grove Hall, the late great Walter Little had that vision. He owned that property. And he enlisted the support of the Black Community Information Center because at that time is when CDCs were emerging and there were about seven groups that wanted to be the CDC for Grove Hall. And he said, could you please bring them together? That led to the formation of the NDCA Grove Hall and eventually the building of the mall. Uh, we were actually with the support of the community uh, with the Flint, Michigan water crisis, we were able to facilitate a process where two trailer truck loads of water were sent down there. Uh, there was a time that the uh, students at Northeastern, black students there were concerned that their John D. O'Brien Institute was going to be taken from them and we worked with them and based on their work, we now have that John D. Institute over there more powerful than ever. Uh, so like I said, that's just to kind of give you an example of some of the things that we do in the community. And oh, I should mention the fact, most importantly, we have our own building uh, called Imani House in Dorchester uh, which is our headquarters, but also we have uh, nine units of housing for uh, formerly homeless elders and individuals with mental health issues. So that kind of gives you a sense of what we do uh, to present to the community that, you know, we can do things for ourselves. Now, let me just say that 
when it comes to the issue of uh, symbols and names and what have you, uh, throughout our community, uh, we have names that have uh, uh, honored individuals who were involved in the slave trade. So before it became a national phenomenon, we at the Black Information Center many years ago led the effort to have the former uh, Washington Park renamed Malcolm X Park because George Washington had slaves. Uh, we then also led the effort to, in fact, have New Dudley Street renamed Malcolm X Boulevard because of the fact that the Dudley family, vis-a-vis -vis through then government, Governor Thomas Dudley in 1600s, led the effort for legislation to be passed to, to in fact, uh, legitimize, you know, legalize slavery in the state of Massachusetts. So once we had done that, uh, we said, well, you know what? We've got uh, Dudley Square, and it's a major contradiction that our primary commercial shopping district uh, in the Hot Rock community is named after a, a slave-supporting family. And I should mention that our borders are much more expensive than expansive than just the commercial district. You walk Hampton Street across Dudley, up Blue to Quincy, make a right on Quincy, then go straight across through the Townsend, back on down to Columbus, to Tremont, and back on down to Melania Cass. So that's our borders. Uh, so essentially what it is, is that uh, in terms of the square name, and let me just say that um, the formation of the uh, Nubian Square Coalition came uh, because of the fact that there was so much momentum behind support for the name change that, that it became a component of the Black Community Information Center and led to a ballot question November 5th, 2019, where the community overwhelmingly, we're talking about 80 to 90 percent of the vote in certain wards and districts, voted to change it to Nubian Square. Now, what's really interesting is that prior to that vote, I was down at uh, the State House. Uh, through arrangements made through with the office of uh, uh, State Representative China Tyler, who in fact is a trustee board member for the library. And essentially what it was, that we were thinking, well, we want to change the name for the, uh, the uh, station also, which is the uh, primary, uh, the largest in terms of population uh, transportation portal in New England, about 45,000 people a day come through there. So we said, well, after we get the square name, that we want to change the name of the station. So I'm down at the State House, did my presentation to the Transportation Committee, and essentially after I completed it, a couple of state reps who I did not know, they said, Mr. Cambon, if you do well with that vote, in terms of the square, we think that you're going to have a, a pretty clear path to the changing of the name of the station. So we won the vote for the square. So we said, okay, Next is going to be the strategy for the, for the uh, station and for our campaign. And uh, <laughs> pleasantly, what happened was that before we even had a chance to even start that campaign, we get a call from the Office of State Representative China Tala that told us that the legislature down there, based on the result of the vote in terms of getting the name for the square, they took the action on their own to rename it to Nubian Station. And so we said, okay, well next, it, our target is gonna be the library. And we felt that the momentum would carry over from uh, what happened with the square and the station as it pertains to the library. Now we, we did a petition, we did community meetings and what have you about wanting, and we want it to be called the Nubian Library. So I reached out to the Boston Public Library to Mr. Leonard. And uh, Mr. Leonard indicated he was well aware of, of the square name and the uh, station name and that we were looking at the library. And so he indicated that, you know what, we like to have a community session to get feedback from the community based on what we'd been hearing in support of the Nubian Library name. We said, no problem. Uh, so consequently, before that meeting could be convened, I get a, a, a notification uh, from Mr. Leonard through his secretary, Ms. Pamela Carver, basically uh, inviting me to the May 26th trustee board meeting that we referred to. So in this document, which I have in my possession, it stated that the name 
issue will be on the agenda, but no vote will be taken. So it was virtual. I'm there. My presence is there. And so what happens, they went to the agenda and then trustee board. Now, let me, I heard this whole thing around all this testimony and the preparations for that around the issue of the name. The then trustee board chair, Mr. Robert Gallery, stood up and said, you know what? I know we've completed the agenda, but it would be unfortunate not to have a new name for the library in Nubian Square now that it's been, now with all the, <laughs> the repair and everything that's been done. And he said, I propose, I propose that it be called the Roxbury Public Branch Library. Now, I knew right away that that was not spontaneous on his part. And now when I hear this thing about the amount of folks who testified in behalf of it, look here, I was there virtually. And the only thing they got was one phone call from a resident who I'm assuming they contacted in advance that called in. It was Mr. T I can't remember. It's Mrs. Tessel. It was Tessel Collins, uh, Mrs. Collins, Tessel Collins wife who called in. The, that was the only voice that happened. Now, what happened was that I heard the issue around the vote of seven to four. The good portion of the folks of the seven were not from the community, number one. The four who voted against it said they were uncomfortable voting for something that they knew was not within the context of what the community wanted. So subsequently, uh, what happened was that <laughs> Uh, we reached out about the unfairness of the situation. And so let me just say that uh, it's, it's, it's really unfortunate. Let me just say that first of all, Mayor then, uh, well, prior to her becoming elected, Mayor Wu said that she absolutely supported the Nubian name and that the bottom line is that even Mr. Leonard himself stated that we at the library recognize that the substantial sentiment for the Nubian library name. And that's when he offered the alternative, which he just mentioned. But what he didn't mention was that when the question was raised about the name, which we rejected overall anyhow, when he said the Roxbury uh, Public Branch Library in Nubian Square, he admitted that the, on the official city record, it would be the Roxbury Public Branch public library, but it would the addition of New, in Nubian Square would only be an administrative gesture, not part of the official record for uh, the city of Boston. So let me just say that uh, this whole process has been uh, very disturbing in the way it's been conducted. For some reason, it appears that uh, <laughs> there are some folks who do not want the Nubian Library name. And when we talk about the reason, the reason why we didn't want it to be called the Nubian Square Library, we wanted to be along the Schomburg model in New York. Uh, we want not only for it to uh, be, you know, a, a quiet space for people in the community to come to study, but also that there would be research going on. We'd have a wall of honor listing folks like Mel King, Doris Bunty, um, Mr. Cass, folks of that nature. Um, so, what it is, is that, you know, we want what has been stated. We want recognition and actually, when we're talking about this Nubian Library name, we feel like we're in fact uh, being disrespected because it's clear what the community wants. And for whatever reason, uh, we've been getting this resistance, if you will, and, and, and when, I, when I hear this talk about the, the sentiment expressed by, by all these community groups in support of the name, uh, I'd like to know where that happened because it sure didn't happen at that meeting that I was at. So let me just say this, that the community is thrilled with this name in terms of, and it's more than just a symbolic act. And I'll, I'll give you an example. I was talking to some students there at uh, Madison Park High and uh, also uh, John D. O'Brien. And one of the youngsters stepped up and he said, Brother Sadiqi, he said, do you know how good it makes me feel? He says, when I come out of school, I come out here to Malcolm X Boulevard. I go down to Nubian Square. And he says, if I'm going right home, 
I get a bus at Nubian Station, and he said, and someday I hope I'll be doing my homework at Nubian Library. So the reason why we're here today is that we would hope that uh, assignment emerges that, you know what, we're going to re respect the wishes of the Roxbury community has made it very clear that it wants the Nubian library name because of the fact that, you know, I'm just being very candid when I hear about this community-wide support for the Roxbury name, that uh, that's not a reality. It's not a reality. And I challenge anybody to prove that, in fact, it, that is what is going on right now. So I'll just say that I appreciate just the opportunity to do this presentation. Uh, it took us eight years to get the Nubian Square name. We have Nubian Station. We've been working on this issue with the library for about two years now, three years. And let me just say this, that there was a, a meeting that the counselor Anderson convened at, convened at the uh, bowling building. And Mayor Wu was in attendance and I brought up the issue of the library. So when it was over, she said, you know, well, we're still looking at that. When the session was over, uh, this young man came up to me. Well, he wasn't, he, was, he wasn't young. White male, did not know him. And he said, look, he says, you don't know me. He says, but what's the big deal? He said, the people have spoken, just change the name. And then he just walked away frustrated. So. That's our frustration right now. And, and, just, and just, you know, when I hear the council talking about this community, we feel like we're being disrespected with a plantation mentality about, you know what, we know what, these, what the slaves want, but we know what's best for them. And so I would hope that that mentality will be reversed and that action will be taken immediately for us to have the Nubian library name, because we want the trifecta, Nubian Square, Nubian Station and Nubian Library, and I thank you for your time. Thank you, Mr. Kenbon. Um, next up is Ms. Jamada Smith. Jamada, it's on mute, but you have the floor. Okay, thank you very much. So um, my name is Jamada Dahala Henry Smith, and. Um, I want to thank everyone for being here right now. I'm uh, most of you. I think I'm seeing everybody on the screen, and I'm very happy for this. Uh, this is one thing about the pandemic: we do get a chance to just see people up front and personal. Um, I, uh, I'm one of my churches, my parish, St. Catherine Drexel Parish. We are founding members of uh, GBIO, and one of the things that we're not afraid of is to pray in our own faith tradition. And so I've been praying about this thing and um, I'm just looking and listening. And uh, I don't really tell my age. It's not that I try to hide it. I have three great grandbabies, you know, but I've been around and um, here I am today on the 19th, I think it's the 19th of April of 2023. And I'm always having, here I am again. I mean, I'm I have to be calm. I have to be cool and I have to be collected and I'm seething, you know? And I, I have another C word and it's culture. It's culture. And one of the things I love about being a Bostonian, when I was a little girl, I was raised by a Christian mother, a Muslim father in the Jewish neighborhood. John the shoemaker was Irish. The, the man next to John, he did the tailoring. He was um, Greek. And we had this lady, she worked at Mr. Moulton's and she was an Eskimo. We, Vilma and, well, and Waltrup were from Germany. We had a Boston is a melting pot. Throughout the country, you go somewhere and try to get a decent Chinese food in Atlanta. Uh-uh, you get it in Boston. You get the best, but it's about culture. And what I'm saying here is that if people don't know already, and evidently you don't know already, so I want to try to help the logic 
and the mentality, because it's a mentality and it's a mindset. And we are the first, I was, I think it was Dr. Jackson was mentioning the other day that the Boston Public Library is the first library in the United States of America. So we are first with a whole bunch of things, okay? And so my thing about it is that um, it's about a culture. Even some of the black people are afraid of a Nubian. Don't be afraid. You know, Irish, it's a culture. I don't know who on here, I would like to see a raise of hand of the Irish people, you know, because I, okay, and, you, and guess what? You see this little green I have here? You know, I, I didn't used to like to really say this because this is what we've had to go through culturally. Do you know my mother is a Collins? Do you know her father was Jacob? Do you know his father was Patrick? And do you know his father was Garland? And guess where Garland was from? Dublin, Ireland. Okay, so don't be afraid of the culture. Chinatown doesn't mean you can't be black and live in Chinatown. You don't have to say Irish to go, go to South Boston, okay, and go to Dorchester. It's automatically corned beef and cabbage and stuff. You don't have to say Italian, you go to the north side, right? But it's just about a culture. That doesn't mean I can't go live there. So why do we have to make it such of a big deal at, in 2023? And so these are the things that I'm gonna try to calm down because I'm supposed to be calm and, and I'm shaking in my boots. And because we are here, you can't see my feet. I don't even have shoes on, so I don't even have boots on. But, I, and so my point is that I need to uh, appeal because some of you already get it. And then for those of you who don't get it, I would like for you to, if you can't work from the heart, work from the logic, logic. And Mr. Leonard, I appreciate you for more reasons than one. One of the reasons I uh, appreciate you because you are the voice, you are being the voice of some of the people that think the way that is being thought. And you use the word all. It is unfair to the little white children to not know. And that's the very reason I've been on all these years with the veterans and friends of Gordy Memorial Park. The late Fern Cunningham, she sculpted before she died. General Gordy, we've got 10 bar reliefs that are gonna be put up. If you go down to Nubian Square right now, you'll see it in the making. It's to let the white children, the black children, the brown children, the red children, what is that little song about all the children of the world? It's not fair to them to not know that veterans, black veterans were in every war. So what I'm trying to say is it is not fair. A little white child is not being a racist if they don't see things in the books about the black culture. So there's nothing wrong, there's nothing to be scared of. And so that's, these are some of the points that I wanna point out. And then to correlate with the squares, you know, you have the Eggleston Square, you have the Codman Square, you have the Copley Square. Why in God's world would you not have Nubian Square? I, you know the analogy I see? I don't even watch television, but lately they had this little thing about the girls with the basketball. When the little white girl was doing this, she was being um, just on it and she was being something to be proud of and she was doing like this. It's kind of like that little thing about the little girl with the curl in the middle of the forehead. When she's good, she's very, very good. When the black girl did it, she was horrid, okay? Now, it's a mindset and it's up to all of us. We've got to fix this thing. It's taken forever, but that's okay. I am not concerned about my children. I'm not concerned about my grandchildren, even the great grands. I'm thinking about the children, even in their mother's wombs and the generations. We need to fix this stuff. So you gotta do some catching up, catching up so that the children can see. And this is one of the very main reasons why it's important. Why you wanna know why, well, why not? We need to write the wrongs of things that are not right yet. And then 
in all fairness, in all love, I just have to love everybody because it's against my religion not to. And some of these names that you named, you know, I'm going to just be straight. I mean, even within the races, we're so messed up. You know, I was around when the Black Panther people were saying, Black is beautiful, Black is beautiful. They had to keep pressing that because guess what? We were just so ugly. Our lips, our nose. If those Black Panthers hadn't just kept telling us, Black is beautiful, Black is beautiful, we would not, this screen wouldn't look like it does right now. And so more work has to continuously be, to be done. So it's about justice. It's about doing what is fair and just. And I'm trying to, I want to be here to help you to think and to think about the babies that you love. You talk about all. If it's all, let's make it all. And don't be afraid of the word. Don't be afraid of Nubia. You're not afraid of Chinatown. You know, don't be afraid of that. So let's just get to the the heart of the matter here, you know, and uh, I'm almost, I appreciate every one of you that came on that automatically said that, you know, you were in favor of it for whatever reason, even to support. Um, but but the thing is, it really, I felt inside my, I felt like a little crybaby and I wasn't acting because it felt it was so good. And then God bless Mr. Miller, but Mr. Miller, I'm not going to name call it. Not a, it's not a negative name, but it's a name that's used within the community when the mindset is that of one that is totally, I'm not going to brainwash like, but I'm saying that Mr. Miller was so opposed. He wouldn't even allow us to buy an ad in his paper to ask the people to vote. First, we asked if we could get uh, 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 get in there, and they said no. And so then we said, well, we found out we collected money, you know, and we tried to find out, okay, we found out how much it would cost to put an ad in the paper. We couldn't even buy an ad. So I don't, I was going to say, give a fat rat. I don't, I'm not, I love Mr. Miller. I know he, he's friends with some of my family members and everything. It's nothing offensive. But what I'm saying, when you quote these people, and I know some of these people in this group, okay? And I'm just trying to uh, bridle my tongue a little bit because these people that you're calling the community is not the community that went out there and voted 4,000 people that said Nubian, okay? And so I'm trying not to be angry because I'm, I'm not going to be angry. And the Puerto Rican sister, you know, you know, you have a culture, you know, and I'm not still complaining, but I'm gonna tell you something. My children, I'm gonna tell you this quickly because you're looking at a, I don't know what you call them now. We used to be colored, we used to be Negroes, we used to be, you know what else, the N word. And then I've heard some, they don't even say it anymore, blackity black people. But it's the people, there's a woman, her name was, we called her Mama Charlotte. Mama Charlotte and Mama Harriet. Big Mama. Big Mama wasn't big, she was just a young grandmother and she didn't want to be called grand, big grandmother. Then you had Malik, then you had Jamada, and then you had Shahid, then you have Ahmad, and then you have Amaya, Alisa, and Ali. That is eight generations of my family, my family on my paternal side. Now I haven't even gone to my, grand, my mother's side, but I'm, I'm saying all that to say, we have a culture and we need to bring this thing up because, you know, poor Fannie Lou Hamer, is that who was saying I'm sick and tired oh, of being- Oh yeah, did you reply? Yeah, I think I got Councilor, yeah, Councilor I Murphy, I need you to Councilor Murphy, I need you to mute. Put your one thing second. on Councilor Murphy. Just give me one second. On Councilor Murphy, can you can you mute? Thank you. Yeah, staff, can we make sure accounts stay muted? So, Tamada, back to you. Sorry. All right. So anyway, I try to time myself. I don't know how much time I have, but uh, don't you know there used to be this song and it says, "Don't take away our music. It's the only thing we've got. It's our piece of the rock." Don't strip us of the culture that we're trying to get so that we can all 
All of us can be together. Okay, so leave this thing to the community, the real community, the people who voted. I don't know who the, I have on an eyeball. I know some of these people. And, 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 and as an aside, Mimi Jones was on the friends of what used to be called Dudley. And God bless me, she rested in peace. And Mimi and I were downstairs at the, and having some snacks in St. Catherine Dressel. And Mimi, had, Mimi, she's the one, if you all don't know, she made national news because when she was 15 years old, she went and helped to integrate this hotel. That was the whole idea. And the older black people didn't know how to swim and they had young kids in there. And the man literally poured acid in the pool. But Mimi said to me, she said, Jamada, and she did like this, and you know Mimi's cheeks. She said, I would love to see a little black boy saying, I'm going to the new Nubian library. And she was a struck down member of the Dudley, friends of Dudley, okay? And so I, I'm gonna close in one minute. But what I wanna say is, yes, we would love to see little black children, but you know, I go to that library two and three times a week. And guess what I see? I see white children. I see Asian children. I see brown children. Okay, and I can tell from those young people and how happy they are there. And they're in Nubian Square. They will not be bothered if we do not, if we, if when we name that name Nubian, and they're not going to be intimidated by any respects. So I'm very grateful. I'm happy that my eyes are on you all. I'm going to see if I have any other notes. I'm just saying, fix this for the children. You know, make some history. You all are the history makers. And I appreciate you all because you have to come up with all kinds of decisions. Erin, I see you. You know, I know that you're on different things. I'm you with the with the with the veterans, you know. I, and I know you're on this other thing with the redistricting and all that, but you all have to do so many things. And I get that. But just try to have a mindset. Set the pace. Historically, it's time. It's really past time. Stop quelling this thing, okay? And give the people what they want. And I'm gonna be quiet because I've timed myself. I thank you all and I appreciate you, each and every one of you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ms. Jamana. Um, next up is Dr. Reginald Jackson. Good morning. I guess it's still morning. Um, and I want to um, recognize, um, you know, all the protocols and observe them as uh, we uh, move forward in this hearing. Um, and I want to say that I, I appreciate our city councilors, uh, the hard work that they do, and um, the vigilance that's required in order to get us to a place where we feel that the needs of the community are being addressed and that uh, uh, what goes on is in response to the needs of the community. I would like to begin by saying that as an educator, I've been uh, in the schoolhouse for at least half a century uh, here in Boston, New York, New Haven, and in West Africa. And so I've, I've, I've seen a lot of different kinds of situations and variations on some of the main themes that run through what's being discussed today. And it's about identity and it's about culture. And I think if there is nothing else that comes out of this after you know, a positive outcome that folks remember, it is that we should think about how culture is the bomb as well as the cure for many of the issues that we face. And by that I mean 
as we look at culture, and you know, my background is in communications as well as visual anthro. I've traveled around the world uh, looking at how African survivals or African retentions manifest themselves in various forms of expression uh, as Africans were moved from the continent to just about everywhere in the world. And I think it's important for us also to understand that we have been dealing with a false narrative. And by that, what I mean is that when we look at recent, current, uh, historical facts, without looking at how they originated, where they came from, we're all, we're all descendants of Africa. And I don't know if you uh, have the occasion to watch uh, Dr. Henry Louis Gates's uh, um, Finding Your Roots, but when you find someone who is in their 50s, 60s, and older, saying after divulging the genealog genealogical basis for their being, oh, I now know who I am. It's, it's really, in 2023, for someone to live most of their life and not really know who they are, and that's, we can do much better than that. And I see a library, like the library in Nubian Square, as a, as a starting point. Naming the library Nubian takes us all back to the beginning of humanity at a time when humanity is being challenged. Again, 2023, here we are. And we're talking about debating whether or not black history should be taught or African history. But it's not just black history or African history. It's, it's, it's world history. And it's the history of all of us. So when I hear about, well, inclusive or exclusive, uh, that, that, that is no longer a viable argument. We're all from the same place. And what we need to do is to accept the fact that healing needs to take place. And that healing comes about through uh, the manifestation of culture and how we apply the culture. Naming is so important and integral to that construct. So I think a lot has been said already about how this procedural piece happened. And it's unfortunate that uh, through the platforms that we work on, allow for these sort of distortions and variances from, from fact, from truth. And somehow or other, we're going to have to find a way to move forward, to bring clarity to folks. As a, as, a, as a young person, there was nowhere in my educational process, and I have several degrees, where I learned anything about my ancestry, African ancestry. It was only after I finished my first graduate degree that I began to realize that there was a whole other dimension that I was missing, and that's why I went into anthro. So I think we have a real opportunity here to educate folks across the board. We're not just talking about uh, uh, folks of African descent. We're talking about everybody. The, the false narrative 
that has been laid on us uh, needs to stop. And we need to get with the, 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 the real history of, of humanity. We all know that humanity uh, started in Africa. And so this whole discussion, I think to some degree is moot because we're talking about the whole history and the whole history uh, comes out of that experience. So I, I'm, I'm pleased to have the opportunity to uh, be a part of this panel. I'm, I, I, and I'm excited about the possibilities that lie ahead as we move to a Nubian library that says to young people, you are somebody, you do have cultural heritage, and that we're on our way to healing. Because once again, culture is the bomb, but it's also the cure that comes along with our healing. So um, I don't want to belabor this. I think that there's strong support. The, the folks have spoken, and this is what people want. This is what our community wants. And when I say our community, I mean everybody. And, and so I, I think we should move forward and get this done so that we can go on with the important work that uh, Mr. Leonard and others have, 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 uh, have started in the renovation and the, of, the, of the library and, and bring this to another level where folks can feel comfortable and, 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 ident and being identified with a historical marker that says we're all the same people. And that would be Nubian Library. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, Dr. Jackson. Um, I'm gonna go now to counselors for questions or comments in response to the advocate panel, um, and then I'll take public testimony. So I just wanna flag for folks who wanna give public testimony if you're watching this. Um, shoot cora.montrond.boston.gov an email that's c-o-r-a dot m-o-n-t-r-o-n-d at boston.gov um, it's helpful if you could do that in addition to raising your hand on the zoom um, just so that i know that you want to give testimony um, but uh first before we do that um we will go to council Andrews. thank you madam chair and thank you to all the panelists um i have some questions for um uh, David, uh, I guess uh, in, within your process, um, David or Evelyn, whomever can answer, um, with you, within your process, did you document uh, the people? Were there any surveys? Were there any signature lists? Um, do you have any documentation um, and a proper list of all these people that um, said no to the name change? Have the minutes from the May 26th meeting at which testimony was given um, both publicly and in writing. Uh, we are submitting that if we haven't already to council as part of the record for this uh, for this hearing. Um, you know, I, I will acknowledge that in May of 2020 we were what three months into the the pandemic, and so um, you know I think you know had that not been the case. Um, there would have been more opportunity for for input than than there was at the time, um, but uh, that that's our that is our answer to the question. We do have we do have those on record. How many people were at that meeting? Um, I would have to check the record and get back to you. It's on your minutes, though. Yes, at least from a from a people who who um, gave testimony. Attendance would not necessarily be in that, but uh, we can check the records for you. But for the people that voiced uh opposition you would have that because they voiced it yes 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 but you 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 mentioned um that there were um that you wish that if, if it was during the pandemic and they and that if it wasn't the pandemic i guess you're insinuating that you would have more attendance um, or we would have uh, had a in-person meeting which might have um allowed for um um 
you know, more people to attend. Um, that's possible. I think the, you know, in in the virtual world, as we've learned over the last two years, sometimes you get more people, and it's easier for some people to attend. But this was early enough that I think that's that's uh, that's quite, it's worth that's worth keeping in question. Um, thank you. And what in terms of the COVID time, um, if you didn't have enough participation, and, and unfortunately we're not able to have a proper discussion about how many in attendance. I mean, if you had five people testify in a meeting of 20 people, then that doesn't actually necessarily constitute of the community. So then you have the other group who have collected about 4,000 signatures in support of the name change from the community. Um, and then the folks that you've listed, um, I think you you listed. I, I heard about four people. I didn't hear more than that. Um, and then with Mr. I guess the banners article um, again. Anyone can take a position and make an opinion. Um, and so I I'm trying to I guess make the point that it seems as though you collected a handful of people opinions and you went with it. And if it was COVID, if it was during COVID the pandemic, then it, I, it, it would seem that we need to reconvene to create that process all over again, because you actually did not collect and you are admitting that th there would have been more participation, which sounds like it was low attendance. Um, if that's the case, then a small meeting during a pandemic does not speak for the community at large, does not speak for Roxbury at large. And so would you consider uh, doing the process all over again so that it's actually inclusive of the majority of community members. And then I, my office is happy to support you with that um, and bringing participation so that we can actually engage the community at large as opposed to just um, the several people on the list. I think the significance of the individuals who spoke in favor at the time of the Roxbury branch name was weighed by the trustees, specifically being the friends, users, and uh, others directly connected to the work of the library. So I don't believe it was purely a matter of numbers um, that was um, being evaluated. Um, I also, you know, uh, understand that um, staff members at the time heard informally from everyday users about their preferences. Um, the vice chair, uh, Brenna Ortiz, spoke about canvassing the local community in her own remarks today. Um, so, you know, I think um, it is not simply a matter of how many people, individuals, spoke publicly Understood. at that particular meeting. Um, thank you. Thank you. Um, so I guess the, the significance of those people outweighed the community at large? I, I'm not going to make that uh, conclusion, Councillor. So if it didn't, then it doesn't, that, that the significance of those, the handful of people you're mentioning does not outweigh the community at large. So we, the trustees believed they heard from two sets of voices primarily, both representing the community, both felt, you know, there were names being proposed, which were not the same, but which they preferred. And it was the job of the trustees to evaluate that input and come to a conclusion, which they did at the time. The trust friends and the trustee, the friends, sorry, the friends, and then you said people spoke with the employees and they collected, you know, opinions or uh, support um, for their position, but there was no proper documentation and a community process that actually included the community at large. It sounds like if I work with you and I, I you know what, I'm hearing this from my coworkers too, that's you would have to agree. I hope you'd have you would agree that that sounds like hearsay, like it's not actually a proper documented process. And then the friends and all of these people, then we'd have to look at 
does that reflect the demographics of Roxbury and when and then they don't speak for the uh, community in Roxbury at large at, 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 at all. In fact, I would even incorporate uh, how long have you been here? I would even incorporate that into it because it's important. Um, did you, Evelyn, do you have a list of the businesses that said no to the Nubian name? But you mentioned you surveyed and you yeah, wanted to- Yeah, so, so I'll tell you about the businesses that I regular have been going for the past mm -hmm. 30 years. Oh, sure. That I, don't I, have that I, that I, and so I don't have names of people, but I mean, I've been names. visiting, no, hold on. No, so, no, no, you hold on, sorry. This is no, how, no, no, no. You sorry. asked me a question, I'm trying to no, answer. Evelyn, that's not how this works, sorry. I, I, I'm actually allowed to question you and ask you to go to the next question. I'm, I'm as a city councilor I'm in this hearing, I'm asking you to yield for a moment so that I can get clarification of what you're saying. I'm not trying to be rude to you. I'm trying to get clarification. When you said you have names, see what happens is this, this, this format is not very good at communication and then we're on Zoom, so it's, it's hard and I apologize. Um, but I do have to slow it down so that I can get clarification for the record. So what you're saying is you have names of businesses that you frequent in, but you don't have names of the people or you don't have a, a survey. Okay. No. Thank you. No. So can I, can I add course. additional details? So I've been going to El Platanero for the, for the time that I've been in Boston, which has been over 30 years. And in various visits to El Platanero, I had, I, I spoke to people who work there. I spoke to random people in the supermarket. I also visit in Mondonguito, which I go there frequently for food. And I also spoke to people who are visiting. So I did not take names. Um, as you well know, people of, of Latin descent, they don't like giving names because they're afraid of, you know, if they're if not here legally, you know, what are you gonna do with my name? So there are people who don't trust about giving names. So then I think, and the information was not to be used in official manner. It was for me to sort of, you know, gauge the community. Because what I'll also say is that, although you all, you know, and I'll, I'll say this, and is my personal opinion only, I said, I the people who are participating in this committee it feels to me that it's one-sided. The people that have been noted in the in the in the minutes at advocating for a different name have not been included in the testimony except David and myself. So, uh, thank you. That's, that's all I have to that say. gavel. That means it's my time, and I have one more comment, Madam Chair, if it's okay with you. Sure, go ahead. Thank you. Um, do you see why we have to go fast? Because it's a timely timed thing, um, Evelyn. Um, and so it's like question, answer, quick and go. And I'm sorry about that. Um, it sounds like hearsay for the business, hearsay for the employees, and hearsay in terms of the uh, testimonies, hearing it from people. We need, we would like to ask through the chair that you provide, not you, Evelyn, because you're stating that there are no names for the businesses. Um, but for uh, David, if you can provide the minutes that actually shows who testified and who they represent, um, I understand your point about coming from the friends or a representative from different places. There are civic associations in Roxbury. In fact, Roxbury has the most number of civic associations from all of Boston. <laughs> Trust me, I appreciate them, but it's also a lot. Um, and I guess my question is, in your process in engaging community, um, then were any civic associations, especially for that catchment area, included? Um, the process calls for the uh, trustees' meetings to be public. Um, those meetings were, uh, were public, were notified, the agenda was listed. I'm sorry, where did you um, notify it? Uh, we, uh, through the clerk's office. And, oh, I see. Yeah. But the, the, but they weren't invited directly. Uh, I'm I'm not specifically. Individual members may have relayed uh, invitations, but um, uh, for trustee meetings, we we not necessarily have a practice 
Um, obviously, Mr. Con Kanban has said he was specifically invited. We knew this was a, a topic of interest. Um, the friends were specifically invited. It was a topic of interest to them. Um, but uh, beyond that, um, public posting of, of uh, notification of, of meetings is our standard process. I would say that it sounds like the community at large was not properly um, communicated with or invited or engaged. It sounds like the businesses, I can name more than Mondonguito and El Platanero, porque yo también hablo español y I've, I've been here over 30 years as well, Evelyn. And I live, I went to school in Newman Square all my life. I went to Dearborn, I went to O'Brien, I lived in Academy Homes. This is my, this is my place, right? So like, this is our place. So I can name all of the businesses in Newman Square. And I, I and, and the thing is, is, I don't think that they were properly surveyed. I don't think that the civics engagement associations were properly surveyed. I don't think that the community was properly invited and engaged. I'm asking again for you to reconsider and uh, doing this process all over again, especially because obviously 4,000 signatures is overwhelmingly way more representative than th your process that you listed today. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank Thank you, thank you, Councillor Anderson. Um, going next to count to President Flynn, um, and then to Councillor Murphy. Um, Mr. Mata, I see your hand up. I'm just I'm going to keep going through the councillors, but I'll come back to you at the end of their questions if you haven't had a chance to say it. Um, going to Council President Flynn. Thank you, Madam Chair. I don't necessarily have any have any questions, but I listened closely to the comments from the community and learned a lot about the neighborhood of Roxbury just listening, just listening to the to the residents. And I got a lot out of that as, as a district city councilor that also represents the South End. So I just want to say thank you to Ms. Smith and to Mr. Jackson and Mr. Cambone that appreciate your your comments and I think listening is a critical part of this debate as well. The more we're exposed and, and listen to residents, the more effective we are in representing our constituents, whether whether it's in Tanya's district or it's my district, but um, listening is a critical part. So I want to say thank you to the community that are on this on this uh, Zoom meeting. And uh, just want to say thank you to um, you, Council Fernandez Anderson, to uh, Madam Chair, and to uh, the Public Library team, uh, David Lennon, uh, that are on, um, and Evelyn, that are on as well. Th thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, President Flynn. Uh, Councilor Murphy? Um, I'll come back to Councilor Murphy in a moment. I'll just see. Um, Jamada, do you want to, did you want to say a word? Yes, I, I, I just want to humbly say this. Uh, first of all, one of the plights is that the businesses, the, the owners of the businesses in Nubian Square, they're not even black. I don't mean not people of color. They're not the people with the pain, with the this and the that. So when you ask them, they're coming from a, even if you do ask them, you know, you, um, I don't find that as a very good representation because the people with the money who were able to own and to sell in Nubian Square and then close their gates and go back to their own personal communities are not representing the people that we're talking about. That's, that's my, one of my points. And then my other frustration I was told when I was a young girl that rules are for people that you don't want. And I'm wondering about this thing that has taken place. It's broken. Can't we just fix this? Can we find out how to fix this? Why can't we just right this wrong? You know, I don't feel like going back out and rounding up a bunch of people and fight this fight. We have so much to do in the city of Boston and we are on a roll and we are getting so much accomplished, you know? And um, 
you know, I'll do whatever I have to do, and as my mother would say, until my tongue thickens, you know. But why have, do we have to go through all of this again? Can't somebody find out? You know, everybody, you know, you, you, we, you know, we have exceptions to rules, and we have the law, and we have the legislation. We need to just fix this thing and get it taken care of because it's, it's broken, and I appreciate it. Thank you, um, Councillor. Um, is he gone? Thank you, Councillor Flynn. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, um, Mr. Mata. And uh, and in a minute, I'm going to go to public testimony. Um, just a couple of things I wanted to say. Um, one is, you know, I think in some ways, listening to all of this, um, I think that uh, it sounds to me like part of kind of the speed of the process and everything that happened had to do with the fact that everybody on all sides of this question agreed that it obviously wasn't going to be called the Dudley Library anymore. And so it seems as though, you know, in some ways what happened was because there was going to be a quick move away from that, there was a quick move, you know? And so I think, um, and, I, and I appreciate the impulse there to recognize the voice of the public in terms of changing Dudley Square to Nubian Square. Um, and, and the fact that that's already become, you know, our standard part of our conversation. It always makes me smile because even before I met Mr. Jamada, I made my way into Nubian Notion some years ago. So it's, uh, it's, it's nice to have seen that come to fruition. Um, so, I, you know, I just want to acknowledge that I think that that was also a piece of the puzzle here was that everybody knew that you couldn't, when you can stay at the prior situation and sort of notice everybody and get everybody involved for an extended process, that's one thing. Um, it seems like, you know, there was a desire to make a quick move, but then I think we're obviously here and here on the council, a question about whether all the voices that needed to be heard were heard and whether we really ask people the question properly of what you want to name the library. Right, because I think also um, there's obviously, we obviously had the ballot question, we've had a lot of conversation, but the conversation where we specifically put to people the question, what do you want to name the library branch? Um, sort of, it sort of came sideways at the library branch, right? So, um, so I mean, I've definitely learned a lot. Uh, again, it's, um, it's not my district and I'll be stepping off the council soon, um, but I, I, I really wanted to hold this hearing and help progress the conversation forward. Um, and I feel as though uh, we're doing that today, so I want to thank everybody. Um, I am going to go to public testimony. I've got one piece of written public testimony to read that was sent in by somebody who has been watching but didn't want to um, speak on camera. Uh, and then I will go to um, the hands that I have raised right now are um, Mr. Lewis Elisa and then uh, Levette. Levette, if you're able to put a last name in there, that would be great. Um, but uh, I'll just read this testimony first from Deanna Tarver uh, and then go to Lewis Elisa. Um, so the testimony uh, from uh, Deanna Tarver is, I, I believe it should remain Boston Public Library, Roxbury Branch, and each library is in a section of the city, and it is named for that section. I do not agree to Nubian Library. No one asked me my opinion, and I live within blocks of the library. Thank you. Um, so again, that's from Deanna Tarver. Um, I'll now ask the staff to bring Louis Elisa into the room. Mr. Lisa? Yes, I, yep, I was, uh, thank you. I was being brought in, that's what took the time. Um, thank you, um, Chairwoman Bach, and congratulations for your transition. Um, my name is Louis Lisa. I live at 68 Cedar Street, Roxbury. I've been a resident of Roxbury for um, the past 50 years. However, I've been a library, our library user for more than uh, seven years. I grew up in the New York City Public Library System. I've been a part of the Friends of Brooklyn Library, New York City Library, Boston uh, Library for a while. I was sending donations in, but I, I've held libraries in high esteem because libraries hold a very special place in um, my understanding of the world and things around me. They were a very special part of how uh, we worked as a community in all the cities I've worked in across the country. In the world, the library has been a central place for the people who live uh, near there. They're almost like parish houses, and so they have a very special role. I think that um, just in keeping with the reality of what libraries are and what can really how they originated, the first libraries 
the world has known, the greatest libraries the world has known, began in a place called New York. Uh, there's no disputing, disputing that, uh, not just Alexandria, but before Alexandria, the libraries of the world and the great thinkers of the world came to the place that we consider now Nubia for knowledge and education. I think much of what the testimony has been is to say we want to encourage young black children and brown children to see themselves in the context of the world around them. The idea that people who like to name places of importance um, that are relevant to their culture is common, um, whether it's Chinatown or whether it's Spanish town, or whether it's, you know, um, you know, whatever the housing development that we name after somebody that we revere and want our family and, and, and children to grow up with, it's a normal process. Um, the request that um, we change from the name of someone who's oppressive from Dudley, um, and I know the history of the governor and his son and others in the age in the slave trade, which now, you know, without too much political correctness, but rightness, we know um, that a lot of Places were named after individuals um, because it was common to do. And at the time that it was named, that was the prevailing culture. But that culture has changed. And so, therefore, it would be an intelligent um, thing to take into consideration that um, given um, support and weight to naming a place so important as a library. Um, with the cultural um, backdrop and understanding that maybe some young person, regardless of race, would go in there and want to know where the libraries come from and where were the great libraries of the world established and what they mean, would have uh, great resonance for what libraries provide, which is access to extended education, access to extended learning uh, beyond just the public schools. Um, it's, it's always been a respite. Um, the New York City Public Library is incredible because they still do programs in the communities. We have a book wagon that I help pay for the part of national grid nationally. So I'm not going to stay too long, but I just want to say that it's, it's a decision that's made by the city council. Uh, if naming buildings are made by the city council, uh, we've done this before. Um, when um, Honan Library in Austin had to be named, there was no question. Right away, I was a part of the group of Charles and City Council and at the time. And we move forward. Um, when libraries and other areas have named, we have no challenge. I sat on the development of the Mad Pen Library. So I'm thinking that if a decision can be made that if you need to go back and hear from more people other than your immediate circle of friends and employees, it might be a good thing, it might be a logical thing, and it might be the correct thing to do. And so I'm in support of the change of the name to uh, meet the, com the community and the changes that are taking place in the area to encourage young people, young people, black and white of all ages. Me llamo es Luis Alejandro Isla. I have no problem letting people know that I'm in support of this library and the name change so that it reflects the concerns of the community. Thank you. Great, thank you, Mr. Elisa. Um, go next to Lavette um, and then to Samuel Pierce. And then I um, apparently I have a couple more um, letters to read into the record, so I'll do that as well. Um, going to Lavette. Hi, can you hear me? Yes, we can. You have the floor. Hello? Okay. Yvette Coney, I was not able to change it on there. I'm not sure why, because it's really a closed webinar. It's not one of the webinars where you can actually change your name. I can't go back. I guess when I registered, um, that was the only point in which I could do that. But my last name is Coney, as in Coney Island. I'm an active uh, member of, of Roxbury, of the neighborhoods. Um, I'm the president of the Neighborhood Association. And I am in collaboration with a number of different people um, in Roxbury to help make sure that we have the better quality of life. Um, I was born and bred in Roxbury and I have used the library at various points of my life. Um, and with the exception of being away in Japan for eight years, I recognize the importance of naming institutions in our community. And um, as a critical thinker and researcher and a reasonable, a reasonable person, um, I, I, after listening to a number of different people who are on the trustee board and, and, and working for the city for the um, library, I feel that this process was extremely flawed. 
and that the use of their bias and it was, it's been very distasteful. And even when questioned by the counselor, it seems to me that uh, the stronghold to a piece that um, we recognize that you have to have things in writing. You have to, like, even you asking my last name and asking for that information for this testimony is very important. So why is it that the, the trustees are able to just use anecdotal information to be able to hold steadfast to not allowing the community at large to be able to change the name to Nubian, Nubian Library. It seems ridiculous and it seems really, it seems racist actually. Um, and so living in a racist society, everybody is racist, but there are people who are at different levels where they hold on to power within institutions. And I really believe that this has to change and, and I think it's really obvious and evident that it should be changed to Nubian Library. And I am supportive of that new change. Thank you. Thank you, Lavette. Uh, next up is Samuel Pierce. We bring Sam in. Thank you, uh, Kenzie. I just wanted to um, first say congratulations to you. Um, we definitely have uh, earned a, a wonderful new chief of the BHA. I'm sorry to see you leave the council, but um, obviously very big congratulations to you. Um, Thank you. I just wanted to say as far as the library is concerned, um, I do think that we should have the library named after the square. Um, we have the Copley Library named after the Copley Square, Eggleston Library named after Eggleston Square. Um, and so I think that because of the way things have transpired, um, as far as the, the trustee board not being really transparent as far as the process, they've for a long time pretended that they didn't know how we would rename the library and we found out that it was actually the city um, that could actually do it from the executive side. So that would include um, the, uh, the city council being able to weigh in on the naming of any edifice or building. I think that we should also look at it holistically. We've now named, renamed the square. We renamed the station. And so I think that the intention is to rename the library, Nubian Library, and then also rename Dudley Street. And so I think that hopefully as we start thinking holistically and as we're talking about renaming things, we also take this opportunity to rename Columbus Avenue after Mel King. I think that people were very excited about that idea. Um, and so since this is the, um, the committee that would be renaming city buildings, the city streets, city libraries, I would like to hopefully propose and, and voice my um, support for the renaming of Nubian Library, but also that we hopefully do it holistically in one swoop, um, that we can also rename Dudley Street, um, or at least start that process, and then also start the process of renaming um, Columbus Avenue. So thank you very much um, for your time. And um, again, congratulations. All right, bye-bye. Thank you so much, Sam. Thank you for the testimony and thanks for the congrats. Um, I, all right, I'm gonna read a couple more. Um, I, there are a few more people who are in the participants queue but have not raised their hands and I don't have you signed up, but if you do wanna testify, please just raise your Zoom hand and I'll bring you in in a minute. Um, I'll read, uh, um, a letter that we received from uh, Eric Estevez. Greetings. Um, my name is Eric Estevez, and this written testimony is in response to Docket 0259, an order for a hearing to discuss renaming the Roxbury branch of the Boston Public Library to the Nubian Library. I am not in favor of renaming the Roxbury branch to Nubian Library. I believe the name should remain as is. Of the 26 BPL branches spread across the city, 15 of them are named for one of the 22 distinct neighborhoods that make up the city of Boston. People love Roxbury. Much fewer people love the Nubian Square name. 
While the reasons why the name change was successful are many, I do not support a name change from Roxbury to Nubian. Neither the context nor dynamics are the same. The Dudley branch was already renamed to the Roxbury branch and Roxbury deserves to have a branch library that carries the whole neighborhood's name with which people throughout Roxbury widely identify. So the Roxbury branch should, re should remain named the Roxbury branch library. Thank you, Eric Estevez. And then I see I've got a hand up, so I'm gonna go to Elizabeth Nagaraja and then I'll read the last letter I've got. Um, can we bring Elizabeth in, please? All right, Elizabeth, I see you. Um, if you can unmute yourself, you have the floor. I'm coming. I just was trying to get my video to go, but it won't go. Uh, there we go. Oh, there we are. Now I can see you. Good afternoon, everyone. I have been listening, and I was a bit hesitant to come as a panelist, but I thought it was important for me just to speak. I'm Elizabeth Nagaraja, a longtime resident of Roxbury, have lived here uh, for 47 years of my life, homeowner and stakeholder, but I also am the president of the Friends of the Roxbury Branch Library, which I have been the president for the last, I think, six years. Um, I've heard a lot of things today that I had not heard before. I was on that meeting when the name change came up. I have been to several different meetings about the name change. Um, and when I'm speaking, I'm speaking with two roles. I'm speaking as an independent person who has frequented the library for over the last 28 years, um, the, this particular branch. Um, I also, as a member of the Friends, we, when we spoke about this at our meeting and Mr. Campbell did come to our meeting and share his thoughts, um, some, I would say that the, when they're mentioning the Friends in support of the name, I wanna make it clear that it was not a unanimous vote to support the name Broxbury. Um, so I wanna make sure that's clear that it was not everyone who was in favor, but the majority were in favor. As this conversation has continued, I understand the importance of Nubian. I understand the importance of holding the name of Roxbury. Um, I'm coming forward to say that while there's a lot of conversation about how that meeting went and that there was no public forum prior to the pandemic, there were several meetings about the library, the what was going to be included in the architectural aspect of the library, the naming of that library. I attended all of those meetings. Myself and maybe three other Roxbury residents were at that meeting. It wasn't until the name actually came forth and was put forth that there was a public outcry. I think that um, to, to the many points that have been made, I don't think that enough people put their input in the very beginning. And that's why we are here where we are. And I think it's important to remember that when we have these public meetings, that often the public attendance of people in this area can be low. So then we end up where we are now. We are at the point where the name is being challenged because other things in the square have been called, have been renamed Nubian. But I think it's important to remember that this was not a attempt to, because I was at those meetings and it wasn't an attempt to um, disrespect our neighborhood. And unfortunately, where we are now is because it is other things that have been named. I understand the importance of having everything be uniform, but I wanted, I th thought it was important to share that when I was at those meetings, I would look around and there were not many of us there. So, as we revisit this, keep that in mind, and hopefully we can get to a point where we agree on what the library should call. If it ends up being Nubian, the Nubian branch, that's great. But just remember, when we're having these meetings and decisions are made, and then we come back later, this is what happens. Um, and that's all I really wanted to say. And that's my personal, that's not representing the friends, because I can't speak on behalf of an entire group of people, but I can speak on my experience on having attended all of those meetings when the library was being redesigned and the name came up, that it wasn't until after the name came 
that a lot of discord can. That doesn't mean we can't still have this conversation because I think it's important to have, but I think it's important that as we're moving forward, that we keep that in mind. Um, and again, I am the president of the Friends. I am not speaking on behalf of the Friends. I am speaking on behalf of Elizabeth Nagaraja as a member of the community and a person who loves the library, who has loved the library for most of her life. Thank you so much, Elizabeth. Um, and I just want to note that we um, were joined for public testimony by uh, Ruth C. Lujan, our city councilor at large. Uh, so thank you, Councilor Lujan, for being here. Um, I'm going to now read, uh, I've got another, um, another piece of written testimony into the record. And right now, this is the last one I have. So again, if you are looking to testify, please raise your hand um, uh, and, um, and I will come to you. Uh, but first, I'm just gonna say, I'm just gonna read this. So this is from Yamawa Arenas at 89 Ford Avenue, Roxbury, Mass, 2119. Um, Thank you for accepting my written testimony. As context, I served as a trustee of the VPL from 2006 to 2022 and was a member of the Board of Trustees when we voted to rename the Dudley Branch the BPL after the community it serves. I submit this testimony to outline my thinking at the time of the vote, which remains consistent today. While I appreciate the passion and the commitment of the Nubian Square Coalition, I respectfully disagree with their point that the branch should follow the Nubian Square naming. The referendum to adopt the name Nubian Square clearly showed an appetite for discarding the Dudley name for that particular section of Roxbury. I support that decision. However, the referendum did not speak to renaming any of the adjacent businesses, services, or agencies that function in that part of Roxbury. The Roxbury branch is among the largest branches in the BPL system. Unlike other smaller branches that serve subsections of larger neighborhoods, the Roxbury branch serves the entire Roxbury community. In the spirit of inclusiveness, I believe that the name of the branch should reflect the entire neighborhood, not just the immediate area in which it sits. In addition, the name Roxbury had clear support from important stakeholders in this conversation. Notably, these included the friends of the then Dudley branch, committed library users who volunteer their time and energy to support their local branch library, and the Roxbury Historical Society, keepers of the rich and diverse history of this neighborhood. The diverse makeup of Roxbury residents has shifted considerably since the first Roxbury branch opened in 1873. There's no reason to believe those shifts will not continue. As a resident of Roxbury for over two decades, I see the cultural heterogeneity and diversity of our community every day, including on my daily commute through Nubian Square. As a former trustee and ardent supporter of an institution uh, whose motto is free to all, I believe that the BPL branch's name should reflect the immediate community in all its richness, standing as a beacon of knowledge and of Roxbury's collective community strength. I hope this perspective has been helpful to your deliberations. Thank you for your time and attention to this matter. Sincerely, Zamawa Arenas, former BPL trustee and Roxbury resident. Um, all right, I think that's everybody. Um, and uh, the... Vicky has his hand up. Mr. Mr. Kembo, I'm happy to go to you, but I just want to say we don't generally let people kind of do a back and forth with the public testimony. So, um, you know, happy to just go to you, but want to be clear that we, we try to let people do their public testimony and not kind of have a back and forth about it. Um, but if you want to go ahead, go ahead. You're muted, though. The deeper you need it. I appreciate, I appreciate the consideration. I just had a couple of issues. Number one, um, there are four or five libraries in Roxbury. And how is it that that location is designated as the Roxbury Library when there are four others, whether you're talking about Eggleston or the other branches, number one. Number two, when I, when I heard the uh, young lady who said she was the chair of the Friends, that... Uh, she gave the impression that uh, there was uh, quite a bit of community discussion and meetings about the name. And uh, I don't see how that was possible because like I said, I was there for the virtual meeting on May 26th when Robert Gallery stood up and said, you know what, and I repeat myself, it would be unfortunate to not have a new name for the library and i propose that it be the Roxbury. that was the within that one hour was when that name change happened with the trustees there was no testimony there was no previous mo uh, Mr. no Mr. meetings about it and so what i'm saying is that that's invalid to say that there was community discussion mr mr Ken mr mr Kembo, i'm gonna so i think just to clarify i think her reference was to meetings of the friends of the roxbury li um, library the dudley library at the time 
prior to that meeting, not to that, but I do just want to, because we don't let people keep coming back and doing more public testimony, I just, I, I want us not to go down the, this lane. I just, I just wanted to clarify, because the, the impression yeah. was given that there was a lot of community discussion about the name when there was none. It was yeah. a dictate. I, I understood that to be her, her referencing the meetings of the friends group prior to taking the vote that she referenced, so that there was conversation there. Um, I, I do want to give Councillor, uh, well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let Councillor Lujan say a word if she'd like to before we close, because she hasn't had a chance, but I do see I've got another hand up in public testimony, so I am going to go to Nia. Can we bring Nia in? Oh, can you hear me? Sorry. Yeah, we can hear you. you have the floor. Okay. Thank you. I am uh, testifying that I am in support of the name change. I actually voted um, when there was a vote that came up, and um, I, I understand that there was an overwhelming support for the name change. So I, I, I know that the square has been changed, the name has been changed, and I hope that the library name will also be changed. I actually worked there when I was a teen. It was like my first job, so I, I have a deep connection to that space. I submitted a letter, I believe, to Cora, so I will keep this short and just say I'm in support of the name change. Thank you. Great. Thank you so much, Nia. Um, and sorry, I think uh, Elizabeth does have her hand up again. Um, can you bring Elizabeth back in? Uh, let's see, maybe we lost her. Elizabeth, are you here? She did not have my name, my hand back up because I didn't want to do the back and forth. <laughs> the back and forth that I've been yeah, trying to cut I, off, yes. Yeah, but that, that I felt. Oh, I'm sorry, I clicked that by accident. Thank you okay. for that. Okay, I, all right. I'm not going to do the back and forth. When we have another meeting, I will sign up again. So, Great. sorry about Thanks. that. No, no, no worries. Thank you so much. Um, and I see, but now I also have Linda Freeman stand up. So I will go to Linda. Hi, thank you uh, for allowing me this opportunity and congratulations. Uh, for the sake of continuity for the square, I'm in support of renaming um, Roxbury Library to Nubian Library. For those who don't frequent the area, it can create a little bit of confusion. So it's easier if it, everything's in continuity. Thank you. Thank you, Linda. Um, and uh, I think that's everything I've got for public testimony for the moment. Um, as mentioned, uh, uh, there's a few people who we had verbal and written testimony for, so all those letters will be on the record for counselors. Um, and uh, Councilor Lujan, would you like to say a word? Thank you, Councilor Bach. Just a quick word, because I, I need to go back and review the tape myself. Just want to thank Councilor Fernand Anderson for this filing and community members for showing up. Our libraries are obviously really important. They're our center of our civic spaces and center of our neighborhoods. Um, and so we, it's just important that the name reflects the desire of community. Um, and so I'll be, my team will be reviewing the record and working closely with Councilor Fernand Anderson um, to make sure that that happens. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Councilor Lujan. And Councilor Fernand Anderson, anything before I gobble us out? I think um, Clifton Breathwaite um, has his hands up, but um, I had a comment to close out as well. Sure, uh, Clifton, yes, just popped in. So we'll go to Clifton first and then I'll go to you. Clifton, can we bring him in? Mr. Braithwaite, you have the floor. How you doing? Thank you. Yes, I definitely would like a name change, but I would like us to bring it to the community and have a real community vote on which legacy name that we use from the community. I would like it from someone from Boston for the library to be named after a figurehead from Boston, one of our leaders. Thank you. Thank you for that comment, Mr. Braithwaite. Um, Councilor. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I'd like to thank everyone to, for coming together. I think I would like to uh, walk away before closing with some sort of agreement to create a community process uh, to redo the process and 
do a more fair, transparent process. I'm offering myself as the district counselor, my at-large co colleagues and uh, council president has offered support as well in reaching the community at large. We are happy to support with this um, meeting in order to uh, be able to reach everyone and hear everyone's voices. I think that overall, um, it saddens me to to walk away from this meeting without some sort of um, commitment or agreement to redo a process that um, it is obvious, uh, you've said it yourself, um, Mr. President, that you uh, uh, that you feel that if it wasn't because of COVID, we would have had more participation, that there was very little participation, and that the people that did uh, testify, they were speaking on behalf of others, no proper documentation of businesses, surrounding businesses. I'm offering um, my support in that as well. Happy to help with surveying the community. Um, as I mentioned, I know every business in that area and um, we have asset uh, mapped a Roxbury entirely, especially Nubian Square. Um, and we understand our community on the ground, very close and up close and personal. As you can see, this is very personal. Um, I would say that you consider the fact that Chinatown has a Chinatown and that in every square you go to, there are different representation of different cultures. Um, you can go to Central, you can go to uh, Jamaica Plain um, by Jackson, you know that Dominicans are there. You can go to um, Phil's Corner, you know that that's a, that's a, that's a um, Vietnamese uh, community. You can go to Hancock Street and understand that that's Upham's Corner and San Jose's Cape Verdean community. Uh, the African-American community happens to be the only community that is not very well supported in maintaining their culture and identity and historical context. Um, and so it is personal and we're asking you kindly, respectfully, to redo the process to include um, the, the community at large and that everyone deserves a voice and to be seen. Um, if uh, you'd be so kind to, to, to redo the process, I would uh, greatly appreciate it. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you. Thank you, Councilor Branch Anderson. Um, I, President Leonard, did you wanna say something? I just acknowledge um, the value in having this hearing and discussion today uh, because we have some jurisdictional questions that have surfaced. I would be happy to follow up with both um, Councillor Tanya Fernand Anderson and outgoing Chair Councillor Bach as to what uh, next steps could look like. Uh, I will also update our, our board and our board chair. Um, so you have my commitment that, that those things will, will happen. Great, thank you so much, Mr. President. And yes, definitely um, one of the things that I'll make sure to do before I leave my role as committee chair is to kind of like pull together the questions and including questions about next steps from the committee and kind of formally um, communicate those over so that there's forward um, momentum for the conversation. Um, but really want to thank everybody for being here today. And um, I think we've gotten through all the public testimony. So with that, this hearing of the Boston City Council's Committee on City Services and Innovation Technology is adjourned. Thank you all. Thank you. Bye, everyone.